Hey folks, your OS Reviews, you're watching our video first look and a quick review of the Vivibrite GP100 Mini LED Projector. So low cost projectors have come a long way in the past three years and the GP100 is one of the first low cost units that sells for uh, 200 bucks that uh, has a true 720p native resolution. That's compared to 800 by 480, which is the current standard for these low cost mini projectors. And that's all right, but if you're looking for clarity, if you want more resolution and contrast in your images, you're reading text or giving presentations, 800 by 480 is just not good enough. So something like this 720p gets closer to being very pixel dense. Uh, obviously we still don't have quite as many full 1080p projectors at this price, but hopefully that's gonna be the next step. So the GP100 also has a 3500 lumen output, so it gets quite bright, and it comes in two different color versions. There's a black and a white model. Otherwise, the device also supports a full HDMI port in addition to VGA for connecting a computer, and you can also pop in a USB thumb drive or an SD card loaded with content without need for a computer, and it will read it and play it back automatically. So you can use this for watching movies, playing games, and the lamp is rated at 30,000 hours before it runs out. And that's already quite good. 30,000 hours should last you for about 10 years before you need to replace the lamp. So let's take a closer look at what you get in the box. So this is what the GP100 projector looks like in person. First of all, even though it's still portable or mobile, I would say it's more of a place in one spot as a home cinema projector than something that you would want to take everywhere with you, like a mini Pico projector. For the sake of comparison, here is the A-Box model that we reviewed earlier, and you can see how the size is quite a bit smaller, even though the overall thickness is about the same. Overall, it's pretty attractive. It's a glossy material that does attract a fair amount of fingerprints and dust. However, it looks classy in this piano black, and as a whole, definitely seems more expensive than the price would suggest. Projectors, of course, with 720p resolution just a few years back would have cost you about a K or two grand uh, for brand names. So it's amazing how technology has become so uh, more and more low cost as time has gone on. You can see there's some chrome accents on the ring of the lamp, and there's also the speaker grill on the front here. There's a version of the GP100 that comes with Android OS pre-installed, where you can shell out a little bit of extra cash to have a extra operating system on here. So you don't need to even plug in a computer for browsing YouTube or Netflix. However, this version is just the regular model. Taking a look at the contents next, Vivibrite is including all the extras, including a VGA cable for older computers and desktops, although I'm not sure if many people will use that these days. There's access to a HDMI cable, there's the adapter for power, which is decent length, and there is also a owner's manual documented in full color, along with a RGB extension AV cable if you want to connect it to a DVD player that's slightly older, microfiber cleaning cloth for the lens, and the remote control for the unit, which is pretty standard and generic for most of these projectors. It's not an air remote, it uses IR, which means it has to be in direct line of sight with the unit to work. Uh, you can't pass through walls and it can't be facing in another direction. You can easily control the menus and you can also flip the orientation of the virtual screen. I can change the input source here and also play pause my media content. So pretty easy to use and navigate with. It uses two AAA batteries which are not included in the packaging. So that's pretty much it as far as the contents are concerned. The design of the projector, if we take a closer look at, also does feature at real controls on the top here, so you don't have to use the remote necessarily to navigate up, down, left, and right, to turn it on, to go through the menu, select an input source, as well as a power, as well as power, and for going back. These are pretty tactile and responsive. And on the back, there are the whole host of uh, ports from power. There's also a switch to conserve on electricity, ventilation grills for the fan that produces a little bit of sound in the background, two full-size HDMI input sources, so you can swap between them. This is a really nice feature that I haven't seen on any other projector in this, in this price bracket. There's also a VGA cable for older computers, two USB ports for connecting, again, thumb drives and hard drives loaded with content, IR port, 
and the auxiliary ports if you want to plug in a speaker or your own headphones instead of using the built-in speaker on here, which is a little bit tinny sounding, even though it gets very loud. You can see on the side, it continues the same design, and we also have knobs for controlling the focus and the lens uh, for adjusting the resolution depending on how far you are away from the wall. It can project images up to 200 inches virtually, and I would say the minimum kind of distance that you would want to use it at would be 50 inches or 60 inches. And that's gonna take roughly, I would say, three to four feet away from your, of your wall to get the best effect. Let's take a closer look at the performance and the video quality next. So here's the default user interface of the very light operating system on the basic model. You can see it's detected that I don't have any USB products connected here, but I can also cycle back and forth and view images, music, movies, and text files loaded on a thumb drive or even a uh, flash drive or an SD card. And you can see that navigating between these is pretty easy. It just cycles through it at the end. Now, if we go into some of the advanced settings uh, and take a look at what we can adjust here, uh, something that you should note is the projector does make a bit of noise in terms of its fan, but it's overall not too bad or too crippling. Uh, here we can change the color temperature, the noise reduction that uh, will decrease the fan a little bit, but uh, of course the unit may run a little bit warmer. And of course I can also change the aspect ratio, things like 16 by 9 versus 4 by 3. And first impressions is that the projector is indeed very, very clear. Of course, there still is a little bit of pixelization uh, if we zoom kind of all the way in, just because right now we have a virtual screen size, I would say, of roughly uh, 80 to 90 inches on the wall. But as a whole, it remains definitely sharper than any other Chinese-based projector I've reviewed in the past three years. So this is definitely a step up in terms of quality. And for things like gaming, if you can back text for presentations, it will make a huge difference in the results and the quality that you can enjoy. Here's what the projector looks like with the lights completely turned off before I had a lamp in the room that was on. So this is a better representation if you are in pitch black conditions. There's also ability to very easily adjust the keystone as you can see here, if your screen is at an elevated angle or some, somehow not completely flat or aligned. Uh, it's not done automatically like more expensive Pico units, but it still does a respectable job. Let's take a look at how it handles transitioning into a different format such as uh, let's say HDMI. I'm going to tap on the input and switch over to HDMI 1. After a few seconds, we should have our laptop screen projected onto the unit. So by default, we have it set up where it's just an extended display for work, but I can also change the properties into a mirrored display. And now we can see everything that is showing up on this laptop or Chromebook that's being shown. Let's do a quick test of what the audio experience is like or the video playing experience is like by tapping on a few videos. So as the video starts to play back, we can also see that the text surrounding you know, the images and everything is completely legible just because of the higher resolution. And that's great if you also are, of course, giving presentations or uh, you have PowerPoints that has words in it that you need more detail to distinctly see. Of course, images are less uh, picky in that manner, but it also improves the overall experience for gaming and for bringing back HD supported content. You can see that overall the colors and the saturation is actually very accurate looking. Uh, the projector is very neutral in its color temperature, maybe slightly cold, but that's the only minor thing. And of course you can adjust that in the settings if you want to, but all in all, definitely very clean and crisp looking, which of course is a point of buying something that has this uh, extra uh, improved resolution compared to the 800 by 480 units we used to see in the years past. Let's switch into another video and give you an idea of, uh, again, what the media experience is like. So right now the sound should be playing back through the built-in speakers of the projector. Uh, and you can definitely hear it. Uh, and again, it gets reasonably loud, but uh, one con would be that it's a little bit tinny and uh, muffled sounding. So for the best experience, I would recommend plugging in your own speakers. 
Finally, just as a te test of uh, something like browsing the web, the New York Times is a good benchmark. Uh, we can see that for complex pages, it makes out the text and uh, content without any issues at all. And again, the smallest of text is also readable, even stretched to 80 inches and 100 inches for the virtual screen size. So no problems at all in terms of using it for presentations and for businesses and for schools. So all in all, I have to say that this is quite impressive. Uh, it's definitely one of the best performing projectors in terms of the resolution and the quality of the image for around 200 bucks. It's still significantly less expensive than brand names like Epson, where you may pay again, a grand or two for something with similar quality. The fan noise is prominent, but it doesn't distract too much uh, after you start playing back a video clip or two. And again, it does perform significantly better than past models just because of a brighter image and more detail if you zoom all the way in and you care about looking at text then it's definitely a great option for a low-cost 720p native resolution LED projector. Thanks for watching this video here at OS Reviews.